So here is my current home network and my three backup mechanisms. My internet connection terminates to my router or firewall and my firewall's LAN or inside port connects to my 24 port switch. My backups consist of a local hard drive copy, time machine backup to my airport extreme, and a Backblaze cloud backup. Backblaze clients run on each of my computers and they backup continuously to the cloud. Why is this setup not ideal? Well, I have an external hard drive on my computer that houses my media. By media, I mean my videos, pictures, music, etc. that cannot use Time Machine backup because two terabits is not enough space for two computers and my external hard drive. I also have no redundancy. My new home network is basically the same, but I've added a Synology DS416 Play NAS, which connects to my 24 port switch. My Time Machine backups now use this NAS and it also stores all of my media. So it can be called a media server as well. My blog contains more information regarding my old and current home network solutions pertaining to backup. The link is in the description if you're interested. The Synology DS416 Play is a home NAS system that attaches to a network via an ethernet cable. A NAS system contains one or more hard drives arranged in logical, redundant storage containers or RAIDs. The Synology DS416 Play has two gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 3.0 ports, two fans, reset button, Kensington security lock, and a power port in the back. The front of the Synology DS416 Play has a removable cover, one USB 3.0 port, a power button, and five lights. Behind the cover, each hard drive bay contains a removable plastic blank. To remove the hard drive blanks, simply depress the top button and remove the blank. I populated the Synology DS416 Play with three Seagate 4 terabit Iron Wolf NAS 3.5 inch internal hard drives. The hard drive blanks can fit 3.5 inch hard drives, which are the type that I purchased, without any screws or hardware. However, screws are included if 2.5 inch SSD drives are used. To install a 3.5 inch hard drive, simply remove the two side rails on the hard drive blanks, insert the drive, and reattach the rails. Synology Hybrid RAID, or SHR for short, is the default redundancy mechanism for Synology. SHR uses one hard drive as a backup, which means the total storage for my system is 8 terabits. One disk can completely fail and data won't be lost. 8 terabits is a huge improvement over my current 2 terabit system. I attach the home NAS to my network with two ethernet cables to my 24 port switch. I press the front power button and the Synology DS416 play turned on and was ready to roll. I downloaded the Synology assistant software for the DS416 play from Synology's download center. I selected the type of NAS, the model number, downloaded the software from my Mac and installed it. The Synology Assistant found my NAS on my network. I clicked on my NAS system and the Web Assistant Setup Wizard started. The Web Assistant prompted me to install DSM, which is Disk Station Manager, and I proceeded with the install. Next, the three Seagate hard drives were formatted and I was prompted to create an administrator login. After creating the administrator account, the setup wizard prompted me to automatically update and maintain my system. I kept the default options, which included day, 
in time for DSM software updates, routine hard drive checks, and hard drive health warnings. Next, I set up Quick Connect. Quick Connect is a great feature because it connects the Synology DS416 Play NAS system to the internet securely. It also eliminates the need to set up port forwarding on a home router. Quick Connect provides an easy to remember host name in order to connect to your home NAS such as quickconnect.2 slash XYZ. Once I completed the Quick Connect setup, it prompted me to drag and drop the customized link to my desktop to streamline the login process. I used my admin credentials I created in the previous step to access DSM for the first time. I really liked the guided tips that appeared after the initial login. The user interface is very straightforward because it closely resembles Windows. Next, I navigated to the control panel because it had a red notification next to the icon. I followed the red notification to the update and restore section where I updated DSM to the latest version of code. I navigated to the package center via the desktop icon and installed a few packages. The package center is similar to an app store and there is no shortage of very, very cool apps. The apps are organized into categories and a search box, which makes it very easy to find what you're looking for. This is the point in the setup process where it is very easy to get distracted. Install the apps that you need in order to accomplish your tasks and move on. Next, I navigated to the storage manager via the control panel. I verified my three hard drives were healthy. I also verified DSM was using SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, for disk redundancy. The main purpose for my Synology DS416 Play is to back up my computers, including my two terabit external drive, using Time Machine. First, I created a shared folder for my Time Machine backup. Make sure to uncheck Enable Recycle Bin, as there is no reason to have a recycle bin in this folder. I chose to encrypt my Time Machine backup on my MacBook Pro instead of having the Synology DS416 Play perform the encryption. Next, I navigated to the control panel, then to User, to create a new user account specifically for Time Machine backups. On the next screen, I assigned Read Write Privileges to the Time Machine backup folder I created earlier. This user does not need access to any other folder on the system. I set a quota to three times the size of my hard drive. My computer's hard drive is 250 gigs, so I set the quota for 750 gigs. As you can see, I really didn't have a good idea as to what application permissions I needed to allow in order for Time Machine to work correctly. After fumbling around with the applications for a little while and changing actually what you see in this video, I ended up allowing FTP, FileStation, and RSync. Time Machine uses a protocol to back up data to an external location. There are three protocol options in the Synology DS416 Play. AFP, SMB, and NFS. The technical details of these protocols are beyond the scope of this video. The most important thing to remember is that native client always is best, even though some support other systems. I recommend to use AFP for Apple, SMB for Microsoft, and NFS for Linux or Unix systems. I moved on to configuring the hardware and power settings. I configured the hibernation period to be five hours. I did this because I work from home and plan to access the system quite often. My 24 port switch supports WOL or wake on LAN and I want the system to restart automatically after a power failure. So I went ahead and I enabled this. Under the general tab, I chose cool mode. This was the best choice for me because the noise from the Synology DS416 plays fans was not an issue. They really are not loud to begin with. 
I installed the Video Station Manager from the Package Center. The Video Station application automatically created a folder called Video. This is where I uploaded all of my home movies. When I finished uploading all of my home movies, I opened Video Station by clicking on the app from the Synology desktop. I clicked on Home Videos. The settings window appeared and I chose Home Movies. Next, I clicked the Select button to inform Video Station where my home movies were stored. I selected the Video folder. My home movies began to populate into Video Station. My full library was populated within minutes and ready for streaming. This allows me to stream my home movies to streaming devices such as an Amazon Fire Stick or Apple TV or any DLNA compatible TV within my home. As I mentioned previously, I have a lot more information on the setup of the Synology DS416 Play on my blog. I'm going to link that up in the description. Don't forget, imagine, create, share.